Hello Internet, I'm your only mate and it's time for another death battle. This time we have Ben 10 versus Green Lantern. Now as I should say with all of my reaction videos, especially to Rooster Teeth content, please click the link in the description below to go watch the actual episode itself. Uh, e well, because it's Death Bell. Uh, either on Rooster Teeth's website or on Death Bell's YouTube channel. Uh, if it's on YouTube, like, subscribe, all that stuff. If it's on Rooster Teeth's website, uh, watch everything Rooster Teeth makes there. Like, first, obviously, it's the best way to support them. Sign up for first membership for all possible. And all that stuff. Okay? Good. Support the official release. A pop-up just came up on my monitor telling me to update. Shit. Fuck off. I've told you to tell me tomorrow so many times. Anyway. Uh, how do I know these characters? Well... Ben 10, I am quite familiar with, because I loved that cartoon when I was a kid. Uh, I watched through uh, Classic, Alien Force, most of Ultimate Alien, I think I missed the ending somehow. And I never watched Omniverse, I refused to watch the reboot. Uh, I mean, I've seen like clips of Omniverse, but that's about it, just based on like things I've heard people saying about Ben, like... Uh, in the coming weeks of this death battle. And Hal... I know his name is Hal. Jordan. He's got the Green Lantern power ring. And he's a Green Lantern, which is willpower. They, like, great constructs. Uh, he got it from a dying alien. I don't really know that much about Green Lantern, personally. Uh, I never actually saw that live-action movie... I'm somewhat hoping that Deadpool pops up in the analysis, uh, just to pretty much take the piss out of it. <laughs> the opportunity's there, I'm just saying. So, yeah, and from what I've been hearing and like, discussing with like, a couple people, I'm hoping, based on what, uh... How that's gone, uh, Ben 10 wins. <laughs> because I never knew about this. But, uh... Ben has this form called Alien X. Which can basically do anything. Is kind of indestructible from what I remember. In a way. I don't know, but... I, I heard about this and I thought, okay, there's no way that's right. And I looked it up and, yeah, it was right. <laughs> um... Alien X withstood the entire universe being destroyed, and then he just recreated it. D just like that. And not only that, but I remember watching it that Ben has to agree, well, get those two heads to agree, and they never do, which is one of the things that really annoyed me when I was watching it. But in Omniverse, like, he has full control over it because he just said to them, look, just let me do my thing. Let me control the body, do all the fighting. You guys can just argue in the back of my mind for all the eternity if you like. And they're just like, actually, yeah, we're cool with that. So, yeah, that was a thing. And, like, among, like, a few other factors into this, and I'm hoping Ben wins... Just because I'm way more familiar with him, I prefer him, like, a hell of a lot. Sorry for any, like, Green Lantern fans. Uh, yeah. Aside from that, uh, I have seen the preview on Death Battle Cast, so I know, like, how the fight's gonna start up. Although... That preview was just music and voice acting. It had zero sound effects. And because of that, I realized... Oh, wow. Sound effects are super important in these. Because this is just not that great without them. So, I look forward to seeing the full episode. Like... Like, the finished version, basically. <laughs> so... Yeah, once I actually refresh the freaking page and... Hopefully you can watch it. There we go. There you are. Alrighty. 
So yeah, hoping Ben wins. At the moment, I think he will, but I'm gonna wait until after I hear the analysis, just to be safe. Uh... Yeah, I actually came, came up with a couple ideas on, like, how Ben could win. One of them is actually not with any alien that people are talking about. One of them's with Upgrade. Because, as I found out, the Green Lantern Ring is technology. So Ben's form Upgrade could possess it. And I was just thinking, what if he possesses the ring, takes it off of Hal, then turns back to human, puts it on himself, and becomes a Green Lantern... And makes a construct of, I don't know, a sumo slammer and, like, crushes Hal to death. I don't know why I thought of that. If that happens, I will laugh my head off. Oh, and the other one is just Alien X. And then... Dust. Yeah. Anyway, uh... I'm just going to stop talking and watch this freaking episode now. Oh, hit my elbow. For years, humans have gazed at the stars, contemplating the possibilities of first contact with an alien race. Will we exchange gifts of peace or weapons of war? Who knows? Definitely weapons. Like these ones. Ben 10, protector of Earth and wielder of the Omnitrix. Woo! Go Ben! Green Lantern, galactic lawman and bearer of the Power Ring. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would, who would win, win a, a death, death battle. I keep forgetting to actually do that at the beginning. Benjamin Tennyson was just kind of an annoying. average 10-year-old boy. He loved video games. Uh, and nostalgia. And was prepared to have the most boring summer vacation ever until destiny fell from the sky. Yep. Upon discovering a strange crash landed alien. Oh, device, Diamond Head Bear appear in the fight. That's. That it, he's always been my favorite one. He's got superpowers. He's no ordinary kid. He's been dead. Sorry, Wizzy. Just can't help myself. That theme song's so damn catchy. <laughs> this it is. strange device was the Omnitrix, a portable library of intergalactic genetic data that can transform its user into a variety of different alien species. Sounds like the perfect way to get freaky with some alien babes from all across the galaxy. Well, hey, you were thinking it too. Don't lie. Warlord Vilgax had something different in mind. With the Omnitrix technology, he planned to create an army of superpowered aliens and conquer the universe. Yeah, he finally got that at one point. Old hentai face would have to wait, cause Ben got the watch first and became a superhero. Well, okay, first he burned down a forest, but then yeah. he was busy with the hero stuff. The Omnitrix contains a built-in radio, universal translator, so radio, many aliens. Blast against anyone trying to force it off Ben's wrist, and as a bonus, it can tell time. And whenever Ben <laughs> comes across a new alien he'd like to cosplay, it can I love how it just has M many more. To his transformation collection, and That's pretty much how I would do it. From. And I know it's Diamond Head there, so. The elements, like lightning, water, I'm at least happy he's on the sidebar. Fire with his very first transformation ever, Heat Blast, along with some just beautiful fire puns. I'm totally hot. <laughs> ah, you gotta respect the classics. As yeah. forearms, he's strong enough to create shockwaves with mere punches. As accelerate, he can run fast enough to dodge lightning. As diamond head, he can survive mass. Ah, uh, diamond head gets mentioned. Nothing. But if you prefer brains over brawn like myself, he can increase his intelligence with alien forms like brainstorm and gray massa. Has an IQ of one nonillion. That's a the one fuck? followed by thirty zeros. And Jesus. A octillion times greater than the highest recorded IQ in history. He can fly as jet I never knew that little detail. Ditto and eat his feelings away as Upchuck. Where's that <laughs> really not a healthy way to handle issues? You know, you're right, Boomstick. Yeah, he should really just stick to alcohol. And if he ever wants to suck for some reason, he's got Waka Trout, which is a fish with legs. Some of these. And that's it. Okay, okay that one I don't know. Transformation, and that's saying a lot considering he has an alien literally named the worst. <laughs> what? Oh, horror movies are your thing. Ben can transform into every classic monster you can think of. Because I guess zombies and werewolves were aliens all along. 
I knew it! <laughs> Through different forms, Ben can manipulate the fundamental forces of the universe, like gravity, radiation, time, Yeah, can he create black holes and feedback, shit? For instance, once absorbed the entirety of the Big Bang. And then <gasps> oh yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> creating a time loop and saving the universe. Yeah, as he's got used to hero work, Ben's aliens started getting pretty insane. Yeah. Like way big, who's basically a giant kaiju who can fire a cosmic ray from his chest, powerful enough to hurt a being made of pure energy. And let's not forget my personal favorite alien, Mole Stash. He's a mole who punches people <laughs> with his mustache. <laughs> that is amazing. You can't write that. Truly a fearsome addition to Ben's massive arsenal. But contrary to the show's very specific title, Ben's Omnitrix doesn't just have access to 10 alien No, he's got a shit fact, ton more than that. 1 million 912. He's no ordinary kid. He's Ben 1 million 912. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't yeah, that... roll off the tongue like Ben 10, does it? Not really. Uh, let's see if I can take one of these babies for a spin. Boomstick has it? Don't worry about it. <laughs> what the well, the Omnitrix does have one drawback. It usually has an automatic cooldown period for a few minutes between transformations. Unless he has master control. can permanently disfigure the user's DNA. All right, we're going to say that four seconds earlier. <laughs> oh, you excuse me. I need to pee out my face. Oh, my God. <laughs> later. This cooldown would be a recurring issue for Ben until he discovered Master Control. A See? special code which, when input into the Omnitrix, just let him use it however he wanted. And yep, no limits. Store, the watch will automatically pop him into whatever alien body it thinks he needs at the time to survive whatever's happening. And there's one form <laughs> that's almost always... There it is. Answer. Alien X. Born in the forge of creation beyond the multiverse itself, Alien X is a celestial sapien. The most powerful species in the universe. He's basically a cosmic god who can punch planets to bits, fly faster than light, duplicate himself, control minds, use telekinesis, reverse so many time, powers. Warp reality, and even just straight up erase people from existence. It takes a lot. We'll create a whole freaking universe. We don't want it. Why not? They could just blink. And we'd be gone. Oh yeah, Ben Classic meets up with he Ultimate Alien Ben at some point. The entire universe by the Annihilarg and didn't feel a thing. Like his durability was so through the roof, he didn't even realize total cosmic annihilation yep. was happening right on top of him. Based on rough estimates made by a NASA astrophysicist, the total oh my mass Christ. of the universe in joules is four. Well, that doesn't seem very impressive. Followed by 69 zeros. Oh, there it is. Jesus and Christ! Up, ben, as Alien X, went and just remade an entirely new universe identical to the old one. Almost. First of all, how the hell? Second, since he just made a copy universe, that technically means that all those characters we watched through the whole show are still dead. Damn, dude. Throw somebody a bone or something. <laughs> However, Celestial Sapiens are composed of multiple personalities, and if they can't unanimously agree yeah. on what action to take, which can take billions of years, all that power is basically useless. Until he got full control. His extra personalities, that that's a really goddamn stupid, and <laughs> he should have full control all the time, so it doesn't matter. Why doesn't he just Pretty much. alien X all the time? Well, a little variety doesn't hurt, right? Plus, even without his alien forms, Ben is pretty clever and has a knack for getting himself so out of trouble. So fucking true. Even when things get really weird. Oh, that, he saved the universe that was more freaky. Than he can count. He's defeated Vilgax when he had the power of a Cthulhu god, ended the hybrid conspiracy, and whooped another celestial sapien, the Galactic Gladiator, by flying so fast he created a <laughs> galaxy-sized black hole. We can tell from the size of the black hole in relation to the galaxies in the background, as well as how long it took to create, oh that my Alien Christ. X must have been flying approximately seven quadrillion times faster than light speed. Jesus! Get it, Wiz. Alien X is totally overpowered, but Ben doesn't keep any of those powers as a human. Not much of no. a problem when the Omnitrix can instantly transform him fast enough to catch the Big Bang. The only thing truly holding Ben back throughout his hero career was his immaturity, being a ten-year-old and all. Oh hmm. yeah, like that one time he messed with the Omnitrix and accidentally set it to self-destruct. Yeah, and that. It for a few days, it would destroy the whole universe on its own. So that's not great. At one ben point, ben he used it to like f over Vilgax. Successful hero by the time he reached the age of sixteen, he would continue his hero work into the future. Eventually, as Ben Ten Thousand. The world can rest easy with Ben Ten as its first and best line of defense.
Six Six and Volcanus? What are they doing here? About to get their alien butts kicked. That's what. Go in here. That analysis made me happy. Hal Jordan was Turn for Green Lantern. A devilishly handsome ladies man and hotshot test pilot who discovered a crash landed alien ship in the desert. Okay, so maybe he's not so average. I'll say <laughs> yeah. he found this guy up in Sur dying in a crashed spaceship who gave Hal a little green ring before kicking the bucket. And so, by reciting an ancient oath, Hal Jordan would become a Green Lantern. Blackest day and blackest night, no evil shall escape my sight. Let those who worship evil's might be where my power, Green Lantern, light. I would not be able to do that. The Green Lantern Corps is a universe-spanning law enforcement organization founded by the immortal Malthusians, also known as the Guardians of the I mean, I wouldn't be able to, like, recite it just to transform- Oh, God, that scene like creeped me out when I was a kid. Okay, whichever mythical creature you want. No, no, I mean, a group of them traveled to Earth centuries ago and literally evolved into modern-day leprechauns. I knew they were real! Anyway, <laughs> the Green Lantern Corps has patrolled the known universe for three billion years, recruiting members of every shape and size. Including a living planet, a sentient smallpox ego? Virus, some guy with an exploding volcano it's just for a head, of a what the fuck? Equation, and a How does that work? Man, even after all these years, <laughs> the it's weird. <laughs> Imagine what it felt like for Hal when he began training on the Guardian homeworld Oa. Over time, he grew to be one of the Corps' greatest members and defender of the universe. Just with that ring of his, it might look tiny, but if Mjolnir, Yoda, and years of therapy have taught me anything, it isn't the size that counts, it's what yeah. you do with it. Uh, right. The Green Lantern Power Ring is actually one of the most impressive weapons ever made. It's most well known for its ability to create hardened light constructs that function identically to what they're inspired by. Anything from boxing gloves to machine guns to an entire solar system. While a ring's wielder huh. must be familiar with the object they're creating, they don't necessarily need to know all the ins and outs for its function. The ring's energy can boost Hal's strength and speed, and also protect him with a force field. He can shoot lasers, phase through objects, turn invisible, so I'm trying to lines, pay attention. Moves, and fly through space faster than light. The only true limit okay. to Power Ring's utility is its user's I mean, imagination. Not surprised he can move faster than light. allowing the Green Lanterns to bend the rules of the universe to their whims. They can huh. transmute matter and energy, manipulate time, form pocket dimensions, and warp the fabric of reality. And even Jesus though, Christ! Sure went out like a bitch, the ring makes a competent Green Lantern really tough to kill. It has built-in defenses to protect against mind control, and it can sometimes yank its owner out of harm's way all on its own. It can huh. even defend against multiversal erasure events, like when Kilowatt multiversal the crisis on infinite Earths. That's right. This guy tanked a freaking retcon to the face. Well, whatever's in these rings, I want it in my dune buggy stat. That would be that's pure, uh... unfiltered willpower. Yeah, how many miles is a gallon you think that okay, is? Okay, well, a Green Lantern's ability stems from their own willpower. The stronger their will is, the more their ring can do. So if willpower is green, does that make fear brown? Yellow, actually, as dictated by the I hope we never find out what makes a brown lantern. Energy field from which all emotion in the universe is derived. Kinda like if the force from Star Wars was a rainbow of feelings. And Hal's got more willpower busting out than anybody else, which makes him really damn powerful. And really damn reckless. Green Lantern got this. <laughs> okay, that's kind of funny. His enormous power has led to his possession by Parallax, an entity of fear, and caused entire planets to fall. But it's been said that knowing true fear made Hal's will even stronger than before. Oh like when boy. he went up against this blue dickweed Krona, who took control of all these space animal gods that embodied the different rainbow spectrum emotions. Including Ion, the green basking I'm shark I'm power. Sorry, I'm growing yes. uh, worried for Ben. No. Hal was able to overturn Krona's plan, which meant overpowering the literal embodiment of all willpower in the universe with his own willpower. That sounds... Uh, impressive. Um. Impossible? Impressible? Hal's been knocked through a plane, a blasted them. by a supernova, and punched by the reality-shattering Superboy Prime. He was fast enough to fly to huh. Earth from a planet at the edge of the universe. And factoring how DC's observable universe is at least 100 trillion light years in diameter, Hal must have been flying well over one and a half quintillion times the speed of light. And without the ring, Hal once had to pilot a ship traveling over light speed manually. As in, there were planets and stars in his way, 
and how oh, to steer. Shit. <laughs> Since he can match the god of willpower, he can pull off crazy will feats that other Green Lanterns have done. Like when Kyle Rayner held back a oh. big bang. But to be fair, the power okay, so I can is both perfect. do that. <laughs> it does carry a finite charge, and should he expend too much energy too quickly, he'll need his power battery to refuel. Also, if his opponent okay, that's one advantage at least. Power, or even just his belief in himself, Hal won't be able to use the ring, which is lame. Yeah, these powers are pretty complex. Batman once had a plan to trick Kyle into thinking he was blind, and because he believed he was, oh my the ring God. acted to his thoughts and actually made him blind. <laughs> what? Hell, too badass to let a little sadness take him out for good. Hell, he's got the cojones to arrest God. But Wiz, I gotta address the yellow elephant in the room. <laughs> Why the hell are Green Lanterns weak to yellow? Ages ago, yes. <laughs> I remember that from Big Bang Theory, that, that whole thing. With their power source, but that is no longer the case, so Hal isn't held back by colors. And really, that's not even the worst weakness a Green Lantern ever had. Would? Oh yeah, way back in the day, a Green Lantern went rogue and tried to take over a planet of people with crude wooden weapons. And so as a great little F.U., the gods oh, decided to make him weak to wood right oh, before God. the blows started landing. Jesus ah, Christ. I think it's not a problem for hell. Whether it be brightest day or blackest night, all should respect the ember of light of the Green Lantern. Or he'll willpower you to death, apparently. Oh, boy. Please say no. You'll never catch me, Lantern. Bang. Pause. Okay, so that's made me grow a little worried for Ben, because uh, hearing the A Green Lantern, uh, I'm not sure if they are scaling Hal to it, although based on what they talked about, they might. Uh, holding back like a multiversal attack, whereas Ben's best thing was just a universe. Uh, they both held back Big Bangs. Uh, I think they said Alien X moves faster than Green Lantern. So, if Ben's an Alien X, then he could win that way. Uh, both reality whooping stuff. See, this is making me want to go for Green Lantern, but at the same time, I don't want to... Uh, I don't want to because I really prefer Ben. But at the same time, the analysis is making me think that Green Lantern's going to win. I really don't know. If I had a coin, I'd flip it. Uh, do I? No, there's no coins around here. Uh. Okay, uh, okay, so the Omnitrix uh, doesn't have a time limit, whereas the Power Ring does. So in the long term, Ben stands a better chance. So that's just making me think it comes down to can Hal kill Ben before the Lantern Ring runs out? And I'm really not Sure. Okay, they, they also said the Alien X can just, like, erase people from existence. I don't know if they ever said that Hal has resisted that. Also, I remember hearing that Ben could, like, duplicate himself, turn back to human, and then the human duplicates can turn into different aliens. You know what, I'm, I'm going to sit with my guns and and go with Ben. If Green Lantern wins, well, shit. Or dare I go with Green Lantern, but still prefer Ben, so if Ben wins, I'm good either way. Alright, you know what? St sticking with Ben. Come on, Ben, pull through for me. <laughs> and play. All 
The combatants are set, let the NATO through all possibilities. I'm so used to the other thing. Death battle! Okay. Best looking guardian of sector 2814 at your service. I can give you 10 good reasons right now to let me go. Sorry, kid. Seems you're carrying a class A galactic super weapon. Well, I mean, it wasn't designed to be a weapon. Okay, that's interesting. You're not the first doofus to try to take this. It's, it's hero time! time. I love the hand-drawn bits when he transforms into forearms. This fight is gonna get absurd, I can tell. You had to say that, didn't you? Heat Blast! It's a fire extinguisher. Several, actually. Jesus Christ! <laughs> you sound something else. Oh, okay. No, I'm not. You're so lame. I bet I could even beat you as gray matter. What? I didn't mean literally. <laughs> Cute. Oh, you're going way big already. Stepped in with that's so Ben. Jesus, oh, you're breaking that out already. Jesus Christ, I'm not sure if breaking that out so soon is a good sign. This is Alien X, but this fight. I'm guessing it's not now. Yep. Come on, Ben. You just pull that out of nowhere. Oh, fuck. Ben's lost. Kind of power. Oh shit! Reality. He's gonna turn this around, isn't he? Time, huh? Thanks for the tip. Oh fuck! You're not the first doofus to try to take this. It's hero to. Oh no! Captain Loser. <laughs> oh, it hurts to laugh. Good, because you just killed a kid. Don't ask. Well, fuck. Oh, well, uh, that's another miner on our board of death. Ben's absurd versatility and ingenuity put up a stellar fight, but Hal had the tools and skills he needed to ensure a victory. Well, the Should Omnitrix's have millions of aliens is just nuts. He could only ever use one at a time, while Hal always has access to all of his powers. Even with the flexibility of master control, this meant Ben was always playing catch-up. Not a great position to be in considering Green Lantern's might. Ben's diamond head form was tough, sure, but he wasn't surviving a planet exploding in his face. Accelerate was wicked fast, but not fast enough to cross the universe in an hour. Yeah, the only one I could way big was well, really strong, stand a chance was X. Supernova. Hal simply outclassed all of Ben's options, except for one. Yeah, how the hell did Hal beat Alien X? That thing is basically omnipotent. Well, not exactly. Celestial Sapiens are extremely powerful, but they can be beaten in battle and have failed in the past. Like the time Alien X recreated the universe. He only did that because he couldn't stop it from being destroyed in the first place. Mm -hmm. Alien X could definitely match a lot of Hal's power, but Hal had defenses against all of X's. Mind control? The ring protects Hal's head. Mess with time? Hal can do that too. Trying to wipe him from existence? Please, Green Lanterns can survive an entire universe being erased. 
Likewise, yeah. Alien X has never shown any defenses against the same kinds of things that HAL could replicate, like mind control, transmutation, and time manipulation. Ben and his alien forms put up a great fight, and Alien X is easily one of the most powerful combatants we've ever seen on Death Battle. However, HAL nah, that's has something the at least. and literal willpower necessary to claim his victory. Guess you could say HAL was definitely the ringer for this fight. <sighs> Oh, Wiz, don't be green with envy. That pun was 10 out of Ben. <laughs> the winner is Green Lantern. Congrats, Hal. You killed a kid. I'm Sam, he's Luis. Neither of us are Wizard Moonsick, but don't go yeah. over just yet because That's we're going to the next matchup. And if you want the battle music, you can click the All right. right below. What's next? Weiss? Versus. Oh. Oh boy. Well, I have a lot to say about the next time. Oh boy. Uh. That is for that fight. I really should have come with Green Lantern like my instincts told me to. I put, I put too much faith in, in Ben. But hey, they got his character down, like, to a T. So, props that. The fight made me laugh, so can't go wrong with that. The analysis, loved it. And those ending puns, like, I gotta give claps for that. Uh, Yeah, and also I really should give props to Ben's voice actor. It's the same guy who voiced uh, Sonic in that Mario vs. Sonic one that happened. Uh, he not only voiced Ben, but every single Ben transformation. Like, that is mad impressive. So, props to you, Ben's voice actor. Anyway, that next time... Another Ruby character gets into Death Bell, and it's not Blake versus Mikasa! Come on! But... Uh... I'm hoping for Weiss's victory, but... At the same time, oh boy, I'm not, I'm not sure if it's gonna happen. <laughs> because from what I know, Persona characters are pretty ridiculous. So, I, I'm, I'm pulling for you, Weiss. But, uh, Chance is not so good. It, honestly, I... Okay, the fight I was kind of hoping for was like Weiss versus Asuna from Sword Art Online. I, I, don't, I don't entirely know. Like, to be honest. Also, I'm just gonna throw something out there for like Weiss's summons. Um, if Weiss gets to a point where Winter is, her sister, where she can summon like multiple Grim at once. Something I always thought could make for an unbelievably insane kill is, uh, Weiss summons a bunch of Apathy Grim. And for those who don't know what that is, um, basically the Apathy, it kind of, like, sucks your emotions out to a point where you're just basically like, eh, I'm just gonna lay here and die now. You just get so apathetic that you die. It's kind of effed up. So, I kind of thought, hey, if Weiss gets in, maybe the kill shot could be her summoning multiple apathies. And, uh... That happens to the opponent. I don't know if that's gonna happen, though. And, uh, oh boy... I'm just gonna go into a little something. 
there's a I'm I'm worried for a certain person for when this comes out. Oh boy. Anyone watching probably knows who that person is. And uh it is open for ways to win. Like for their sake. I mean, I'm, I'm rooting for you, Weiss. I'm pulling for you. At least, so... What's that? Anyway, I'm going to wrap this video up before I uh, go on any longer. So, uh, thanks for watching, all of that stuff. And here's whatever outro that I didn't use last time. I keep forgetting somehow. Bye. Hey, guys. Goku here. You are watching Your Only Mate. And Your Only Mate... It's only good for the fact that at least he won't eat as much of your food. Catch you later.